Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Pikeman's new boss is revealed and so is their plan for Sunny. Today on General Hospital, Carly and Jason are reunited again, Danta wakes up and clears Jason's name, and Sunny makes a move on Ava. Please note that if you purchase something by clicking on a link within this story, we may receive a small commission of the sale. At Sunny's, Carly asks her ex-husband what is wrong with him, as he thinks everyone has betrayed him and now trusts only Ava. She reminds him of everything Jason has done for them. Sunny thinks most of that was for her. Jason arrives outside, and Frank tells him he has orders not to let anyone in. However, he makes an exception for Jason, they shake, and Frank welcomes him back. Jason enters and sees Sunny already has a full house. He offers to come back, but Carly says Sunny needs to hear what he has to say, and she asks if he shot Dante. Jason says he didn't. Sunny assumes he's out on bail, and Carly confirms Michael paid it. Carly asks if Ava has to be here for this. Sunny says she does as she was in that warehouse too. Sunny knows Jason was on the roof, and Jason says he made sure Sunny didn't die. Sunny asks why he should believe him. Jason brings them up to speed on being picked up by the FBI on Cassidine Island and being forced to work for the FBI. Sunny knows he'd only work for the feds for one reason and asks who he is protecting. Jason reveals he's protecting himself. Sunny can't believe Jason is working with the feds, but Carly says he just told them why and Sunny's standing here because of Jason. Sunny says he doesn't know that. Carly asks Sunny what has happened to him. Sunny says his survival instincts have kicked in. He can't trust Jason or Carly. They are traitors and he orders them out. Anna thanks Sunny for defending her to Carly. He says he knew it would piss her off and he can't believe he ever loved Carly. He thought she'd stick by him to the end, but it was always about Jason for her. Ava offers to fix him a drink as she could use one too. She goes to pour the drinks, and Sunny excuses himself. Ava hears his phone chime and goes to check it. It's a message from Olivia, she says Dante is awake and talking. Olivia puts the phone on the fireplace mantel, not back on the table where she found it. When Sunny returns, she gives him the good news that she called the hospital and Dante is awake. He thinks he should call Sam and Olivia and wonders where his phone is. Ava claims she's sure the hospital called them already. He wants to go see his son, but she says the doctors are probably examining him and he should wait until the morning. Sunny suggests they rejoice in the good news about Dante together. Sunny thinks about how amazing life is and while he may have lost his best friend, he got his son back. Ava is sorry about the first, but glad about the second, and while she hasn't been around as long as Carly and Jason, he can count on her. Sunny says out of everything that has happened to him that she's been the only one here for him. Ava doubts she's the only one. Sunny leans in and kisses her. He then tells her goodnight and heads to his room, leaving her stunned. In the quarter main kitchen, Lois and Olivia are with Danny and Rocco. Scout has just been put to bed. Sam calls Olivia and lets her know that Dante is awake and Liz and the doctors are in with him now. Rocco and Danny want to go with Olivia to the hospital and won't take no for an answer. At the hospital, Sam is allowed to go in and see Dante. She asks if he's in pain, but he says he's not, so she calls him a liar. He says he's sorry, but she says there is nothing to be sorry about and kisses his forehead. Olivia shows up and visits her son, and Rocco and Danny look in from the hall through the window. Sam asks Liz if they can come in and say hi, and Liz lets them in. Sam tells them it's hard for Dante to talk, but he could use a hug. Rocco hugs his father, and Danny tells Dante that he's happy he's okay. Danny and Rocco tell Dante he's been in the papers, especially with the hearing today. Dante is confused, and Sam thinks Dante needs rest, but Danny explains everyone thinks his dad shot him. Olivia agrees with Sam that the boys need to step out and let Dante, and she takes them with her. Alone, Sam asks Dante if she can get him anything. He replies, Anna. Anna soon arrives and in the hall, she tells Sam how thrilled she was to get her call. They head in to see Dante. Olivia is sitting with Dante, and Sam explains speaking is a little rough for him. Olivia gives them space, and Anna asks Sam if Dante is caught up. Sam says only some. Anna asks Dante if he knows who shot him. Dante says he never saw the guy before, but adds, not Jason. Anna asks if he saw Jason, 
Dan struggles but confirms he did, and that Jason is the reason he's alive. Later Sam lets Olivia go in and see Dante and talks with Liz in the hall. Liz is happy for all of them. Sam tells her that Dante confirmed Jason didn't shoot him, and she might want to tell Jake. Liz knows Danny will be comforted to hear that as well. Later Sam lets Olivia go in and see Dante and talks with Liz in the hall. Liz is happy for all of them. Sam tells her that Danta confirmed Jason didn't shoot him, and she might want to tell Jake. Liz knows Danny will be comforted to hear that as well. Liz talks to Danny and says she saw him at the arraignment. Danny hoped no one would, but he had to be there as he knew his dad was innocent. Liz says Jason's lucky to have him in his corner. Carly takes Jason to Bobby's, and he says he likes the new name and it's a fitting tribute to her mom. Carly says this place was special to her mom. Jason responds, so were you. They head inside and toast to Bobby. He's sorry he wasn't here for her when Bobby passed. She knows he would have been if he could, and she doesn't understand what is going on with Sonny and how he's acting. Jason knows she has questions about him, but he can't answer most of them. Carly knows and suggests they just stay in the here and now. She asks about his wound, and he says it's healing. She asks what Diane has said. He explains it's an uphill battle unless Dante wakes up, and exonerates him. Carly says they have to have hope. Carly is just happy he's back, but he admits he doesn't know for how long. She knows he's here until the trial and asks where he'll stay. Carly offers to let him stay with her, but he refuses. He also won't take a room at the Metro Court. Carly recalls the apartment above Bobby's, and he thinks that would be perfect. Carly remembers how she felt when she lived there, how she'd come up with every excuse she could to go to Jake's and see him, and now he's home again with her. They embrace. Carly's phone rings and it's Anna. She takes the call and learns Dante is awake and has cleared Jason. Carly knows Jason heard all that and asks how he is, and he says better than he was. She agrees and they embrace. Brennan is being driven in a transport van and asks the driver as exhilarating as it is to be out of Pentonville, where are they going? The driver pulls over, opens the doors, and Valentin hops in for the ride. He tells him, Hey Jack, you are looking well. Brennan thought he had abandoned him. Valentin says Brennan left him putting out a lot of fires. Brennan thought maybe he'd let Pikeman burn down around him. Valentin can't believe no one at Pikeman knew Jason was working on the inside as Alan Jacobs. Brennan says they can't vet every employee to the max, but Valentin says they should have known something was up and Jason worked his way up from the bottom. Jason thwarted their latest attempt on Sonny, but soon Jason will be joining Brennan in Pentonville for shooting a cop. Brennan asks what if Jason gives up Pikeman, and does he know Valentin has been running it since his arrest? Brennan acknowledges Valentin has always been involved on the side helping Pikeman with intel and such, but now he's running the place, a far different job. Valentin warns Brennan that he got sloppy, coming to Port Charles and getting involved with Carly. Brennan had no idea she'd turn up to be Corintho's ex. He asks what Sonny knows. Valentin says he's given crumbs to make Sonny think a man named Stone whom has been dead is after him, so he won't suspect Pikeman. He says if Sonny won't work with Pikeman, they must get rid of him. Brennan asks what the plan is as they need his shipping terminal and Sonny is in the way. Valentin has a plan and says Sonny will take himself down for them. Valentin explains Sonny has bipolar disorder, and he's come to an agreement with his pharmacist to replace part of his medication with placebos, and eventually removing him will be child's play. Brennan warns him not to underestimate Sonny, as he hasn't survived this long being stupid. Valentin says no, he's survived being medicated, and he's already unraveling as he beat an old man with his own hands. Brennan laughs and says, it's official, he's still diabolical. Valentin asks how Pentonville is going, Brennan says it's not too bad. Valentin lets Brennan know he can handle running pikemen for him. Valentin lends him a new supply of cash to bribe the guards with on the inside. Brennan thanks his daddy Warbucks, and asks how Anna is. He knows Valentin finally achieved his lifelong goal of getting Anna to love him, only for it to go up in smoke. Valentin warns him if Anna learns of his involvement in Pikeman, this will be the last time he sees the outside of prison walls. Valentin says Jack really is a bastard. Brennan replies, so are you. Brennan is driven back to Pentonville, 
and talks to the driver about how long he's known Valentin and how they rose to the top together. The driver stops the car when they arrive at the prison, opens the door, and Brennan gets out. Brennan hopes he didn't bore the driver. The driver is deaf and signs to Brennan to get inside. Brennan says, Damn you are good Valentin. On the next general hospital, Brooklyn assures Blaze, This is a really smart step for your career. Natalie exclaims, That's unacceptable. Alexis admits to Diane she's unsure if she should proceed with this. Maxie calls something a win-win. Dante tells someone, Why don't you get the full story first before you write him off? Jake asks Jason, What are you doing here? Sonny exclaims, He's dead to me.